So you're mentioning as a, as a Christian, you feel like there's a role the animals play um, from a food supply perspective? Uh, yeah, and a spiritual perspective. Oh. Uh-huh. Very, it's very key. In fact, it's uh, the key. The key to uh, our relationship with God uh-huh. is set in blood. That's how important it is uh, in the Christian faith. Uh-huh. That uh, uh, the key to our relationship with God is uh, through what is called atonement, and uh, that is uh, made legal by the spilling of blood. Uh, then that relates to Jesus uh, and the spilling of his blood. And I guess, back to the, the, the animal side of it, yeah. I mean, I guess you were saying, do you think we can be healthy without animals? Oh, yeah. Without eating animals? Oh, so, yeah. so and, I guess, and then I guess the question is, what do you think, um, uh, what does God represent to you? If you look at what Paul says, Paul wrote kind of two-thirds of the New Testament, uh-huh. uh, in regards to uh, things like eating animals and that, uh-huh. uh, he said, uh, if it upsets people uh, that you're in relationship with, then it's not worth upsetting people about it. Yeah? So, so, so if people, I went, people, not animals necessarily. Uh, no, if I, went, if I went out for a meal with you, uh-huh. and I knew that you don't like it, uh, I would not eat meat in front of you okay. or with you uh-huh. because we know it would upset you. Yeah. And do you think that would be, you know, from a, a perspective of what, of what God would want us to do? Do you think that circle of compassion well, Paul, would widen Paul makes to the a point. animals? Paul makes a point. Yeah. Of of of, of, of saying if it upsets people, uh-huh. and he actually talks about eating meat. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Then he says, uh, "Don't do it." Uh, you know, eat meat away from that person. But if it upsets them, then then don't. Which yeah. is, so it is a, a a topic in the Bible. So how do you feel like um, uh, the eating of animals and what comes from them relates to the the, te- the testament, "Thou shalt not kill." Uh, well, that obviously uh, is talking about uh, humans because uh, uh, the Bible says we are made in the image of God. Uh, which se- separates us from animals, insects, anything else, uh-huh. right? Uh, we're the only creature on earth that is made in the image of God. So we are different. In a biblical sense, uh, we're not the same as animals. So how do you so feel? They, so the yeah. thou shalt not kill refers to uh, humans, not animals. Do you, do you not think it should apply to, to animals too? Uh, no, because as I, as I said in the first point, uh, uh, that uh, blood uh, is, is key to uh, Christianity. And, and it shows that God puts a value on it uh, and a cost, right? So he puts high value on blood. Uh, so therefore, uh, we are told to be uh, good stewards of the world, uh-huh. look after the world. You should uh, be, uh, shouldn't be unkind to animals. You should respect them and and uh, not abuse them. But at the end of the day, you can eat them. How do you feel about Genesis 129, which states that um, plants, trees that bear fruit, yeah. are put here for us to eat, and they'll be our food? Yeah. Uh, there, I don't, I don't remember true. any mention yeah. of animals in that, no, in that, that verse. No, that is true, yeah. but, but what you've what you got to remember as well is that uh, when, uh, when God was teaching us in the Old Testament uh-huh. uh, about relationship with God, when that relationship is broken... It, it is mended through sacrifice, and that is the sacrifice of animals. So again, I'm, I'm saying that shows that shows there's a cost, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's a high cost. And God is respecting uh, animals, but He's teaching us that that there's that there is high value in that sacrifice. He's not doing, He's not trivialising it. It's not, uh, we, uh, oh, it's only an animal. It's the opposite. He, he's, he's putting that in high value. Okay? 
you understand what I mean? I do, and I guess I'm just applying that to my life. Mm. And, and I guess my perspective is I have two dogs at home, okay. and the way I respect them is by caring for them. I make their food for them. I take them for walks. Yeah. To me, taking their life wouldn't be a form of respect. Well, obviously, no. Uh, uh, for start, uh, you're not supposed to eat those sorts of animals. Okay. Uh, uh, you should uh, only eat uh, grass-eating animals, not meat-eating animals. So, would you say, as a wider picture, any animal that eats grass, That's, you, you would eat? That is the uh, a kind of rule, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and I guess going back to if we can be healthy without eating animals, um, where would you say that the, the animals get their nutrient supply from? Well, uh, there's, there are meat eaters, uh -huh. like lions uh -huh. and tigers, and then there are grass eaters, and, and, and they're the ones that we eat. We eat uh, sheep and beef. We don't eat dogs and cats and tigers. And, and uh, dogs are technically omnivores, so they, they, um, my dogs at home are vegan. So you could technically say that I should, I could eat my dogs under those parameters. Ooh, now that's a difficult one, isn't it? <laughs> now that is a difficult one. Uh, yeah, I, I was surprised to learn the longest living dog in, in, uh, yeah. a few years ago, Bramble, lived for 27 years yeah. on a homemade vegan diet, uh, so it, it can be done. Yeah, but you know, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. You, you don't have to eat meat. I like, we're, we're on the same page, yeah, it sounds like, on a lot of and, things. Yeah. And I'd be perfectly happy not to eat meat. Yeah, and I think a lot, a lot of the undertones of uh, uh, veganism and religion are actually, there's a lot more, there's more in common than not. Oh, yeah. Because, um, as I say, my mom is uh, yeah. uh, just turned 70. She's a devout Christian, yeah. and she recently went vegan herself, and I think they are, they, 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 they kind of overlap more than not, as I was saying. Yeah. So it's... Nope. Uh, I, I, I would say... Uh, I could perfectly happily be yeah. a vegan and a Christian. Well put. Yeah. I think it's about, and maybe share, uh, your thoughts as well, for me it, uh, it sounds like a lot of the things you're talking about are, are kindness towards people, and I think it's just a matter of widening that circle of passion, yeah. compassion yeah. Yeah. To, to animals as well. I would, I, would, I would perfectly happily, as I said to you, uh, show me the, re the recipes, Yeah. and if I can live healthily, then... Uh, it, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't bother me. Uh, yeah. I, I would happily be vegan. Yeah? From my viewpoint, the most important thing is being a Christian. And, and luckily you can do both. So yeah. thank you so much, Sean, for uh, uh, signing for uh, the January and taking the time to stop. Is there any other questions you have about nope. veganism in general? Nope. Yeah, I think you, you're, you're well on your way. And you I think me... I can tell you've got a good heart. <laughs> and I, honestly, I, I think if you follow your heart, yeah. you'll naturally well, I, come to equally, a compassionate community. Equally, I would like you to look properly at Christianity because not many people look at it. You see, they know about it. It's something floating yeah. about in the sky, but they don't actually look at it properly. And I encourage you to become a vegan Christian. Oh, cheers, Don. Thank yeah. you so much for stopping. I'll let you wander around. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you around. See you. Take care, Don. Bye.